We are now awaiting White House reaction to yesterday's bombshell report from special counsel Robert Herr and the fallout after President Biden's rebuttal. We're expecting that reaction next hour. Herr didn't charge Biden with mishandling classified documents, but he sure dealt a devastating political blow to the 81-year-old president, stating his memory was significantly limited. Hello, everyone. It's Friday. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host, Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Fox & Friends first co-host, Carly Shimkus. Fox News contributor and host of Tommy Lahren is fearless on OutKick, Tommy Lahren, and host of the Ben Ferguson podcast and co-host of Verdict with Ted Cruz podcast all the way from Texas, Ben Ferguson. Well, in his report, special counsel Herr concluded that President Biden, quote, willfully kept classified documents in his Delaware residence. But he stopped short of recommending charges, mostly because of our commander in chief's advanced age. He wrote, quote, we have also considered that at trial, Mr. Biden would likely present himself to a jury as he did during our interview of him as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. President Biden fought back in a last minute primetime address. These assertions are not only misleading, they're just plain wrong. I'm well-meaning and I'm an elderly man and I know what the hell I'm doing. I've been president and I put this country back on its feet. Hmm, many would disagree with that. Biden may claim this description of him is false, but a series of mix-ups from this week alone, just this week, even last night, suggest otherwise. Initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate. Right after I was elected, I went to a, what they call a G7 meeting. I sat down and I said, America's back. And Mitterrand from Germany, I mean, from France, looked at me and said, uh, said, you know, what, why, how, how long are you back for? There's been a response from the, uh, the, the, there's been a response from the opposition, but, um, it, it, yes, I'm sorry, from Hamas. When I said, when I we pushed all these programs, I said, I'm going to be a president for everybody, whether you live in a red state or a green state. Making Roe v. Ward the law of the land. The law of the land. Oh, but it's not his mental acuity. Let's blame the, quote, MAGA prosecutor, as his team did in the pages of Politico today. And as reporters continue to press him about his age and memory, Biden snapped. It's How totally bad out. is your memory, and can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I let you speak. That's, you that's my memory. Your memory has gotten worse, Mr. No, president. Look, my memory is not good. My memory is fine. Do you fear that this report is only going to fuel further concerns about your age? Only by some of you. Mr. President, Mr. President for months Mr. when you were asked about your age, you would respond with the words, watch me. Watch Many American people have been watching, and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your judgment. To public that is not the judgment concerns. of the press. They express concerns about your mental acuity. They say that you are too old. Mr. President, in December, you told me that you believe there are many other Democrats who could defeat Donald Trump. So why does it have to be you now? Why, what is your answer to that question? I'm the most question? qualified person in this country to be president of the United States and finish the job I started. Do you, do you, do you, do you Harris, the press was ferocious in a way we do not ordinarily see from this White House press corps. Well, he played into their hands. I mean, I, I did some uh, some fact checking last hour on on just some things he said. First of all, the document does definitely say that he willfully detained some of those documents and that he shared some of them with his ghostwriter. Those were things that he brought up on his own during the news conference. And so to fact check him. You just go to the report. It's not even that hard to do. So it makes me think one of two things, or maybe both. He didn't read it, and his handlers aren't being open with him completely about what's in it. And so that should have been a victory lap. In fact, if you didn't think he could remember the details enough to handle them, maybe they didn't really give him details. I don't know. Maybe he read it on his own, but whatever he read, he didn't get right. But the confrontation with the press and that one reporter saying, you told me in this certain time in December, that's hard for him mm -hmm. because we don't know if he even remembers talking to her. Mm -hmm. So now you've got a back and forth with, with an active press corps now 
that his White House his White House team can't count on to ask him easy questions. They're they're correcting him. Oh, is the word that you're thinking of Hamas? Who's the president of Mexico? It's not Sisi. Oh, that's Egypt. That's right, Gaza. I mean, it was, you know, a week of this. I gave you examples from different parts of his week. Yeah, it was a lot that we saw just in a seven-day period. Look, there's going to have to be an intervention. I, I've maintained he will be the nominee. He's too stubborn to step aside. But given the crucible of voices yelling against him from his side of the aisle, Tommy, there will have to be an intervention. Has anyone seen Gavin Newsom, by the way? Let's put a tracker on him. We should keep track of where he is because he might be the one to step in. I want to play this. This is just this morning from House Armed Service highest ranking Democrat saying this about the Democrat president. He does not have the normal strength to go out there and campaign, you know, to do rally after rally and conversation after conversation. And that's going to be difficult on the campaign trail. That's a congressional Democrat. Yes, and you're very wise to say we should put a tracker on California Governor Gavin Newsom because if you've been watching him for the last several months, you know, as well as I do, that he has been running a shadow campaign. And he's also working to clean up areas of California that are a little lawless. Why? Because he's got to get his national reputation up to snuff so that he can convince the American people he's going to be the one to replace Joe. It's also why he has been the happy little soldier going out and applauding the record of Biden-Harris because he wants to be that one to fill that spot. But when you're talking about what Democrats are doing here, I think that his team, those that are around him, I think that for so long they've tried to shield him and now they're not playing the game anymore because his ego probably has been combative towards them saying, no, I want to go out and talk. And I think they finally said, all right, Mr. President, go ahead. And they're going to give him just enough rope to hang himself because they, I think, quite honestly, are fed up with it. They know he's stubborn. They know he doesn't want to give up, but they're going to push him towards the door and maybe allowing him to speak more often and not hiding him in the basement is how they're going to achieve that. That's exactly the plan. I mean, Carly, we have seen time after time those around him cover for him. Just yesterday, his communications director noted this happened one day after October 7th, as if that's a reason for him to forget everything. I get that that an important day, important foreign policy decisions, but still shouldn't be cause for memory loss like what we saw. The Easter Bunny hopping out to shield him at the Easter egg roll. And then this out in Axios today, the onslaught, the monsoon of press keeps coming. It was January 19th, 2022. President Biden top aides were gathered in the treaty room. The president studied in the executive residence after a press conference that ran nearly two hours. He made several factual errors. Suddenly the group saw Jill Biden in the doorway. Rogers writes, an American woman. She had watched the news conference. The look on her face told everyone in the room from the president on down that they had some explaining to do. Why didn't anyone stop that? She demanded. Everyone stayed silent looking at one another and then at her and back to one another. That included the most powerful man in the world. Yeah, wow. What a report. And for it to come out now, uh, you, this this story in many ways is the definition of out of the frying pan into the fire out of the frying pan no charges into the fire unfit to stand trial i mean whoa what about that uh, and being the president in a lot of ways is a, just about surviving bad news cycles until something good happens and then hoping everybody forgets the problem with this is that this is going to be really hard for people to forget for a lot of reasons. One of them is that it feels gossipy. Like, mm -hmm. Did you hear what the guy investigating the document said about the president? It's easy to talk about. It's easy to understand. It's easy to text about, roll your eyes at, joke about. And I'm not saying you should. Honestly, in many ways, I feel real sympathy for President Biden today, Sad. especially because of the part about his son yeah. and forgetting that he, you know, the date that he passed away. Um, or where it was. Yeah, exactly. But the problem with that is that we're not the only people seeing this. Uh, the leaders of Russia, North Korea, China, uh, Iran right. are also seeing this the as well. The president of Egypt. Yeah, the and that, but of th Mexico. that's exactly why I think this story is more important than any of the legal issues or the two tiered system of justice. It's how it's being perceived by our enemies as well. It's a huge point. And Ben, yeah. I mean, the clandestine information, I mean, the Washington Post laid out this could jeopardize human sources, the kind of information of he had in his basement. But Hillary walks. Yeah. After bleach bit and sledgehammers and Biden walks. But Trump, we got to hit him with 91 counts. I, I think you also have to sit back here and just ask a question after what you saw yesterday. Who's running the, the country? It's not Joe Biden. Is it Joe Biden? Is it the chief of staff? Is it the cabinet members? They've all been covering for 
an incompetent president on a massive mental decline who is taking naps, who is only working about four hours a day by their words, noon to four is when they kind of have his events, who's not campaigning. Who's running the United States of America? Because our adversaries are trying to figure that out right now. It's clearly not Joe Biden. And I think you saw the gloves come off from the media and the Democratic Party last night, and they said, it's time to figure out plan B. Now, they may get back in line. That could happen. Mm -hmm. But he saw, he saw a press last night that he's never come up against in the last three years that was treating him like he was a Republican, asking those tough questions. And I'm not sure you can get them to stop that at this point. And I think now you're looking at, if you're the Democratic Party, who is our next guy and what that is going to look like I come, the, 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 I think, really at the convention. That's yep. where they replace him. Yep. I can tell you who's not running the country. The man who vanished for three days in the White House didn't even know he was gone, the yeah. Secretary of Defense. Hmm. Yeah, last night was a tipping point. Get that tracker on uh, Gavin Newsom. Mm -hmm. Watch him closely. President Biden's rough Thursday turned out to be a big day for former President Trump. His big wins next. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.